peace for Ukraine or Ukraine now. Russia, just go home. So we are always busy with the outside performance and have no room to have an intimate talk with God. Therefore, we cannot find Him. That is the only secret. And now, if you want to find Him, then I actually have nothing much to teach you except how to be quiet and at which time to catch God is the best, which is the hour. <laughs> we can make a rendezvous with Him every day and then at that exact time, as we appear. And then when we are so acquainted with Him, as He appear anywhere, anytime, any hour. And we are so acquainted with Him that even others will see God in us also, or near us, standing by. That is so good. And then this so-called God power will flow out like an ocean, like a stream, and benefit anyone that comes nearby. Like a sandalwood tree, it makes all trees around it become fragrant, like sandalwood. Like a perfume shop, anyone who comes in smells the nice uh, fragrance, free of charge. <laughs> And sometimes you go to a perfume shop, the shopkeeper will ship, ship, yeah, give you a free ship, ship, spray, and you come out, you also feel so nice. <laughs> yeah. It is the same with a self-realized soul. He emits a kind of godly fragrance and a super mundane virtue that everyone would love to be near, and everyone will feel naturally comfortable with. Also the same with the Master, so-called Master, or Buddha, or Christ. They do not actually save any beings. They do not do any particular gestures or have any intention to catch a soul and bring it back home. <laughs> no, they themselves are the magnets they just attract. They cannot help it, even if they want to stop it, it's too late. Even if they want to stop giving our blessing and happiness and joy to the surrounding people, they cannot do it anymore. It's too late. It's just like a fountain. It has to keep running and running. It's just like the ocean. It has to keep being full like that. However much rain comes down, the ocean will not become more full. However much the sun shines on it, the ocean will not become less full. It is forever like that. So all of us can become the same like Buddha and Jesus. Now the Buddha say, saving sentient beings, but doesn't save sentient beings. No one is being saved by the Buddha. Although everyone at that time, his disciples say they are saved by him. But he said that he didn't save anyone. That is a meaning of a natural power which flows spontaneously and naturally from a highly self-realized soul, from a master soul, to benefit others without him having to control doing anything on purpose. And that is what it means by saving sentient beings, but not saving sentient beings. Because if they still have a sense of saving anyone, that means they are not completely liberated from the ego, from the self-centered sense of existence. They are not yet completely liberated from the frame of the human self. So they cannot do this universal work. They cannot contain the limitless, endless, boundless, infinite power of God if they still have a sense of self because the sense of self limits everything. And then you cannot contain the limitless if you are limited. And that is the logic of it. So in order to become a co-worker with God, or a master, 
or the master soul, you must become limitless like that. And in order to become limitless, we have to practice self-losing. So in the Bible, it is say, one who sacrifices the self will gain everything, or something like that. I mean, maybe my translation is not correct. One who loses the self will gain everything. One who takes care of the self will lose everything. Is it not so similar? Yes, that is what it means. Lose the self means losing the ego, the sense of limited being, becoming one with the universe. But it is easier say than done. To be so, to be such a limitless and boundless being, one must practice the ever-present power of God, and one must uh, reserve some time daily to contact with this word, with God's word, and it was God's word, or with the name you cannot name, or with the vibration or the sound stream in the Buddhist terminology. They all spoke of the same thing. If we want to reach the same height as the ancient masters, we have to follow the same path as theirs. That is only simple. So simple is that. It is like uh, everyone who wants to become a doctor, then they have to follow the medical university way of uh, teaching and follow the uh, previous doctors that can teach you, and you become a doctor. So if you want to become like Christ or Buddha, then we have to practice the same method like Christ or Buddha. We have to contact the inner flame, the inner thunderous voice of God. And this way I can offer you gladly and freely, free of all kinds of bondage, all kinds of conditions, all kinds of financial, <laughs> physical, mental commitment. Only your devotion is needed. Your devotion to your own practice. Every day you must practice. By your own time, schedule and arrangement, and by your own free will. And that is all that is needed. Now, I think the time is uh, nearly over. I reserve some time for you to ask questions. Anything you want to ask concerning uh, my lecture, concerning how to meditate, concerning the initiation, any doubt, anything, any skeptical ideas you may ask without reserve. You don't need to even write your name if you fear others. Knowing <laughs> we don't read your name out, just your ideas. Will you please write down on a piece of paper? Or you don't want to write? Because if you ask from over there, I cannot hear clearly. What is steering? What is what? What is steering? Steal. Steal something from somebody. A stealing. Right. Oh, yes. You don't know? <laughs> Whatever that is not belonging to us, and we take it without permission or prior asking, that is stealing be it a grass or a needle. And even talking too much is stealing. Stealing people's time <laughs> and energy. You know this kind of stealing very well. Some friend <laughs> phones you and they talk for hours and you just cannot stop it. Oh, and you get exhausted and out of politeness and compassion, you, <laughs> you just listen, listen. Ah, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, yes, 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 yes. And you don't know what they're talking about because it's so boring. That is also stealing, yes. We should devote time to know God instead of talking about useless topics. <laughs> what is the Guanyin method, the inner sound? Yes, uh, it is like this. When you are yourself open to receive God's blessing, then it will come. So this method is actually God's blessing, it's not mine. Only when your minds are open and completely surrender and want to receive, then you can get this method. The method is without words. And when we transmit the method, we don't talk. And then you will get the inner vibration. You will hear it, but without these ears. And you will see the light of God or the heavens abodes without the eyes. And that is what the method offers not what the method is. 
because the method, I cannot speak it by language. I can only transmit it to you in complete silence. That's why we call the transmission from heart to heart or from mind to mind. Yeah. How does the inner sound bring you to liberation? Because the inner sound is God. If you know the sound means you know God, you get nearer to Him, and you coming near God, it means you get away from demons. <laughs> That's a simple thing. To be near God is to be liberated. Or to be near Buddha, to become a Buddha, it means to be a liberated soul, to be uh, free from bondage, to be free from birth and death. That means liberation. But there is another more concrete way when uh, you get transmission, you immediately transcend death. And this is what's called liberation. Yesterday, uh, I gave transmission to about 30-something persons, and some of them have experienced the death experience. That's what is called born again. Except thou be born again, thou shalt not enter the kingdom of God. So what is born again? Or I die daily. Like one of the Catholic saints said, I die daily. What is it we are dying daily? We are living, and he says he's dying. <laughs> he says he's dying a hundred times daily. That means dying while living. You die, but you don't die. You just strengthen the limit of death, and then you live forever. Once the fear of death is transcended, it's understood by our own very weak and scared soul, we are forever eternal. We are no more. We are immortal. That's what it means. Yesterday he said, when he meditated, just a few seconds or minutes, and he immediately saw the light and the tunnels, you know, the dark tunnels, and inside there is light, and he flows through it, like sailing on the boat, is what he said. Now what is that? You have seen on TV and you have read books about the experiences of the near-death person, haven't you? Yes, they have seen this great tunnel, and then they have to flow through it, and then they see the great being of light, and they explain to them that they are dead. <laughs> but yet their time has not come, and then they have to go back to the earth again. <laughs> and so some of these persons go home. She says she cries off and on for two weeks, because she has to leave that wonderful world and come back to this terrible one. <laughs> is that not so? Yes, that is the limit between life and death. And some of these persons experience that while they are near death, because they have been some virtuous ones. Therefore, when they die, they come immediately to the region of light. But this region of light is not the highest one, may I tell you. There are some others higher, but these are only kind of uh, the frontier between our world and the other worlds just the beginning of the other worlds. The other worlds are higher, 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 limitless spheres of life. And the higher you go, the more speechless you become. And there's nothing to say anymore, nothing to talk about, except someone like Master Ching Hai. She likes to convey <laughs> that to others. <laughs> and then she couldn't even say much. <laughs> but yesterday, this man, or two or three men, experienced that because they have transcended the limit of life and death. They died and they came back again. They have the same experience as that recorded by the doctor so-and-so uh, with uh, many hundreds of near death or death and back again to life patients' experiences. So this is what we call born again or transcending life and death or free from life and death. Once you know how to die while living, you will fear no more death, and you know how to do it at any time. And so when your earth time is over, you know it even in advance. Your master will come and tell you, Hey, three more days, your time is up. <laughs> or in a week's time, <laughs> we will go to another place. So please prepare. And uh, if you owe people money, give it back quickly. Or if your wife is not yet remarried or something, and you have to <laughs> arrange it. Or your children, something, yeah? Insurance, <laughs> uh, life insurance, have to take care. It's that kind of things. 
A master will take care of you in every minute detail after the initiation, and this is his or her job. It's a lot of work, even paperwork, bureaucratic work. But because we live in this world with many complications, the master cannot avoid having to even take care of these, even though his job is not that. But without that, the devotees cannot be free. So we often hear of transcend life and death, be free of life and death, and we don't know what it means. It means exactly just that, at initiation to transcend, and you know what life and death mean, and you have no more fear. Thank you so much. Ta lặng yên nghe kể bao chuyện nghiệp từng lời ca như mật rót vào tim tuôn lưng lưng theo cung bậc em đêm trong vương cảm ta ngỡ ngàng chiến.